technology can show us the problems we need to solve them by Chase Gary. My, so my research question was, now that we have technology that can show us the problems of our modern world, are we doing anything about the problems we encounter? So the stimulus connection, the overall idea of my presentation came from Bob Dylan, his quote in the song in the stimulus packet, yes, and how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? And then my two examples I'm going to go over correlate to these, stimul to these stimulus materials. The speech to the United Nations General Assembly, Margaret Thatcher, she talked about global warming, that's my first example. And the letter from Birmingham Jail and Martin Luther King, my second example is about another group of people in our modern society that are being oppressed and marginalized or, and even killed in certain situations in the, Mid in the Middle East. So my problem that I encountered, we aren't doing anything about our modern problems and we need to start sooner than later. My first example is climate change, once again, Margaret Thatcher. So although we have been doing things about this, for example, the Paris Agreement in 2015, where, most, where a large assortment of countries decided to band together and start, and start decreasing in their production of carbon dioxide over time. Most countries are actually already failing on that, according to an article on National Ge Geographic made in January 9th of 2019. Most countries need to lower their standards by 2030 to 25 to 55% lower. So most of them have been predicting about 7% decrease per year, and now they have to do 55% in around 11 years which is a big problem. Also this graph, uh, it's about the glaciers in uh, the Antarctic. And so as you can see, the amount, the volume of glaciers has been decreasing. And although the amount checked has slightly decreased, the amount that has been decreasing is obviously more than just those slight mishaps in checking. So we aren't doing it. Our second example is Christian persecution in the Middle East. Now, although North Korea is the number one top 10, according to United, U according to the Open Doors USA, North Korea has the most oppression for Christian persecution. Most of the top 10 is actually in the Middle East, so we're, I'm going to be focusing on the Middle East. And as you can see by this graph on Open Doors USA, the orange and the red is where Christian persecution is happening the most often and where it's most prevalent and happening to most people. And according to Open Doors USA, 255 are killed, 104 are abducted, 180 women are raped, sexually harassed or forced into marriage, 66 churches are attacked, and 160 <coughs> are detained without trial and imprisoned every month. Not year, every month. You can times that by 12 for every year. So it's a very large number, and there isn't really anything happening on a national scale for these countries. Maybe the United States is a little bit far out, and it's a very obviously politically challenging problem, but there hasn't been really much advancement in this part of our solutions. My solution one are national laws. This correlates more to climate change about how we can decrease carbon dioxide through national laws or amendments. However, national laws allowing possibly our United States Army to get involved in the Middle East could also help in my second example. And obviously this helps more with just the, more than just these two examples, but this is just a good step one, national laws. Implications and limitations. May, many limitations are that the timeline, it can make take too long to be really any use. And uh, there's obviously gonna be controversy within those laws because there's always another side to the opinion. And the implications, they have long lasting effects. Obviously they're written into our, into our uh, government, so it's gonna be lasting a long time. And it takes into account people's opinions because obviously people need to vote on it to get it passed. And it shows that people care about these problems. Now my second solution is to create a more active internet. Obviously, in our recent years, we have been creating a larger spread of what is on the internet. So to use that to our advantage to solve these problems can be very huge. Open Doors USA, they are helping with Christian persecution in the Middle East, and they obviously have a website where you can go and donate and talk to people who have been living through this and have survived this, which is very interesting. And uh, websites like Reddit, where you can talk and open discussions with people, are actually really helpful because you can think through plans and talk and understand the whole problem rather than just having a bias. Implications and limitations. Some limitations are lack of real life action. You're not really doing anything, you're just kind of talking it through. Another one is that polarization could occur. Polarization is when you have an opinion and rather than talking to the other side of that argument, you just stay with the people of your opinion and you become more radical in your option. And some implications are that, ironically, on the other side of polarization, people could come together and talk about these contradicting thoughts and think through plans, 
and have a really effective argument and have an effective way to solve this. For example, in climate change, I mean, there's many ways you can talk through how solar panels can be advanced and how we can have non-renewable energy and a place like Reddit could be a very good place to talk about how we can impl implicate those. In conclusion, I chose national laws as my as the final solution, mainly because it's a lot more long-lasting. Although it may take some time, these problems are pretty active, and I, most people believe that climate change is happening, and laws can get passed fairly easily. Obviously, with climate change, the glaciers in the Antarctic are an obvious example, and this map for Christian persecution are both obvious examples as to why these laws should be important implicated so people should people would vote for them and they should be implemented so national laws that's my conclusion thank you so um chase could you uh tell me how valid and reliable the sources you used were and how you know that and which sources did you look at that didn't work for you so um national geographic i used for to talk about the paris agreement in 2015 they're obviously <coughs> a very large organization and they talk about uh, our world very easily but however I uh, when I was looking through I saw a web page about uh, a scientist in uh, Mexico talking about how there's problems there about climate change and that's kind of hard to talk about because he didn't really have any sources behind him he was just based on all opinion so I didn't use that in, in National Geographic or no no not National Geographic oh okay it's a different web page. and then uh, what advice would you have for other people who are researching um, who, this same topic, something um, we learn from doing this. Pick, pick something that, uh, pick an example from this, because it's a pretty wide topic, pick like one or two examples and look into it and see, because obviously you can't just say that they're not doing anything if you don't have evidence to back that up. So if they are doing something, find that out and talk about that and look at some positives of it rather than just looking at all negatives. Okay, thank you, Chase.